The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until it is all accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a story of an experience of a young woman at Sick Kids Hospital. She was asked by a teacher in her parish to tutor a boy with some homework while he was in the hospital. The woman or tutor didn't realize until she got to the boy's room that the boy was in the burn unit and in considerable pain. She tried to tutor him, stumbling through the English lesson ashamed of putting him through such senseless exercises. The next day when she returned to the hospital, the nurse asked her, what did you do to that boy? And before she could apologize or finish apologizing, the nurse interrupted her. You don't understand. His entire attitude has changed. It is though he had changed and he wants to live. A few weeks later, the boy explained that he had completely given up hope until this young tutor arrived. Sometimes we are invited into people's lives and into places and events that, on the surface, have no meaning or purpose to us. We ask ourselves, what are we doing here? What purpose do we have here? Often, we define our lives only by what we see and understand. We forget that we are a part of something larger than ourselves. When we forget, we miss opportunity after opportunity, moments of grace to affect our family, our community, our home, and our world. These opportunities of relationships these moments of grace come about because our humanity is made in the image of a relational God. Pope Benedict XVI says, to be in relationship is to be in communion with God. To be a person means to be in relationship. For us to grow is to grow from our individuality to community. We grow by placing ourselves in relationship with God and others. We look at the first reading today. Elijah is appealing to the people of his time. How long will you stand with these issues that we have here? The issues is that we need to recognize that we are in need of relationship. And the way that we can live that relationship out is by allowing ourselves to be servants of the Lord. And we do that by serving the people around us. At that time, for the offering sacrifice, the prophet Isaiah, Elijah came forward and said, Lord God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant, and I've done all these things by your command. Answer me, Lord, that these people may know that you are God. Then the Lord's fire came down. Answer me, Lord. The way we answer each other is the way our relationship with each other develops. We do not break the least of God's commandments. God teaches us to do 
the things to the least of our brothers and sisters. Love your Lord your God with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your heart. And love your neighbor as yourself. We live the commandments by the relationships we form with the people around us. Not just the relationships we can see and understand, but the relationships we build by those opportunities that are moments of grace that affect our family, our home, and our community. As we continue with the Mass today, let us take this opportunity to accept who and what is around us and recognize that each of us is sent and meant to be delight to others in our own fiery way. Trusting in God, let us pray. For the church, that it may continue to unite people around the world, we pray to the Lord. For the homeless and the abandoned and the underprivileged children of our society, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, may the healing love of Christ bring consolation to their lives. We pray to the Lord. And for the faithful departed, who were nourished by the living bread during their earthly journey, that they may be raised on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear the prayers of your faithful people, and out of the abundance of your mercy, Grant us what we truly need. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who hummed himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away our iniquities and cleanse us of our sins. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We praise the glory of His name for our good and good of all this church. Lord, look with love on your service, accept the gifts we bring, and help us grow in Christian love. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through your beloved Son, you created our human family. Through him, you restored us to your likeness. Therefore, it is your right to receive the obedience of all creation, the praise of the church on earth, the thanksgiving of your saints in heaven. We too rejoice with the angels as we proclaim your glory forever. 